Hi, welcome to video number six called Exporting a Map. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take what you've made in your ARC project and export it as a JPEG or a PDF map, something you could use in the field or share with your colleagues. So we're going to cover four key ideas, how to use the layout view in ArcMap, how to add a title, scale, grid, and north arrow into your map, and then how to actually export the map as a JPEG or PDF. So here we go. Here's our ARC project that has a Landsat image of Middlebury, Vermont, and has some of the shape files we've made where we delineated the lakes. I've gone ahead and added a couple of additional shape files, one called Lines, that I used to display some roads in yellow, and another called Points, that I used to display the location of some houses in white. I did that to show you how you can use these different types of shape files to represent different elements of your map. So before you export a map, you may want to be using all these types of shape files to display the different land surface objects. Okay, so when you're happy with it, your shape file and the colors and the way things look, you need to the first step is to go to the layout view. There's two ways to do that. One is to go view layout view. The other is to click on this button down here, Layout View. Now when you come into the Layout View, what ARC is really doing, it's changing your whole perspective, your whole reference frame on the project. Instead of being basically inside the project, you're now kind of looking down on the project as if it was laid out on a drafting table, where you can change the size of the paper, you can change the borders, the fonts, and a bunch of other things as you put together your map. So the first thing to know is that when you're in layout view, there's a whole additional set of controls. And those are right up here. And basically what these allow you to do is zoom out or in. <laughs> here I'm zooming out. Note that the magnification of the image itself is not changing. I'm just zooming out on the whole layout table, basically. So I'll zoom in a little. Likewise, I can use the pan hand and move around. I'm not changing the actual view frame of my image. I'm just changing my perspective on the whole layout object. OK, so use these to navigate. The next thing to do is to change the size of the paper that you're using. And to do that, you can go to Page and Print Setup here. And under Page and Print Setup, you'll get a pretty standard set of options. Um, you can choose to use a preset paper size, like letter, portrait, or landscape. If you want to use a custom paper size, you can uncheck this box here. And that's going to let me come in and specify a custom page size. Most often, you'll want to just use the default letter size, because that's the type of paper you'll be printing on. So I'm actually just going to leave this at 8.5 by 11 portrait size. And I'm going to hit OK. So what this is showing me now, this black line is now the edge of the paper that I'll be printing on. So that's basically the area I have to use to lay out my map. So the next thing I'm going to do is use the black arrow here to go down, click, and then I'm going to expand the size of my image so that it takes up much of the page. I'm not going to take up the whole page, though. I'm going to leave some margins. Notice that when I did that, this space opened up here, basically because my page had now exceeded or my layout window had exceeded the, the size of my Landsat image. So here I'm going to actually use my original zoom tool to actually zoom in on the image itself a little and get a little better image um, orientation so I can really see my map nicely, focus in on just the area I want. And in general, when you're laying out a map, it's good policy to zoom in as much as you can to maximize detail without leaving out 
any important elements of your map. But you always want to be zoomed in as much as you can without leaving stuff out. So I'm going to zoom in on that level, I think. That looks pretty good. I've got my three lakes in here, my roads, and some of my houses. I'm noticing now that these houses aren't showing up as well as I'd like. So I'm going to actually go back over and change the size of those symbols to 10. And now I can see those white dots a little bit better in my map. OK, so the next step is to add a lat lawn grid onto my map. The latitude longitude grid can help you navigate to locations in the field. And it can also be a good reference frame for people who are using your map or locating other objects that aren't on your map. So to do that, I'm going to go to View, Data Frame Properties. And there's a bunch of tabs here. I'm going to pick Grids, OK? New Grid. I'm going to use Graticule. And I'm going to leave it at the default, which is to put a line every 30 seconds of latitude and every 30 seconds of longitude. I'm going to only show major division ticks. And I'm going to let it put a simple border around the object. OK, I'm going to hit OK. And there pops up a nice latitude longitude grid. Depending how important this grid is to you, you might want to use fewer or more lat lawn lines, depending on whether you need to locate things or whether you want to see the image more clearly. OK, so what I'm going to do now, I'm actually, I don't like the fact that um, these are labeled on both the right and the bottom. So actually, and I think I'd like to have a, a lower density of lat long grid spacing. So I'm going to go back up to data frame properties. My Graticule's on. I'm going to hit properties. And this is going to let me change some things. I'm actually going to change my spacing under intervals to 1. So I'll have fewer lines. And labels, I am going to adjust the setting for labels so that I'm only going to label the axes on the top and left and not on the bottom and right. I'm going to hit OK. And the final thing is that I don't like this border because it's getting in the way of my image. To get rid of this border, I'm going to go to Insert, Neat Line, and I'm going to change the border weight to 0. OK, a couple more things to do. Let's go ahead and put in a scale bar. I'm going to go to Insert, Scale Bar. Pick one that you like. I like to use the simple one. OK, so I've got that in here. Um, I can change it to be smaller, and the scale will adjust automatically. I'm not happy with the color scheme. I, I can't see the black show up very well. So I'm going to right click, Properties. And I'm going to change the color of the bar to be white. I'm also going to change the color of the text to be white and make that bold as well. And now I've got a scale bar that's fairly legible. I'm going to stretch it a little to make it even at one mile. OK, and under the same Insert menu, I can add a north arrow to show people which way is north. Put that in right next to my scale bar. And finally, we can add a title to this map document. Again, insert title. And double click that. I can edit the text. And I'm going to call the text Lakes of East Middlebury. To change the size of the font, you can click Change Symbol. 
and then I'm going to make this a 28 point font hit OK and OK okay the final step you'll need to know is how to export your map once you're happy with it to export the map go to file export map and this interface is going to let you choose of course where to save the file what to call it and also what format to export it in you can choose Adobe Illustrator encapsulated postscript PDF JPEG TIFF uh, if you're just uh, outputting a map for a quick print, I'll usually use a JPEG. Um, depending on the detail you need, I'll usually use uh, 300 dots per inch. You might want to go to 600 if you want a really high resolution image. And I'll call this test map. And off it goes as a JPEG. Well, thanks for listening. And to summarize, you've now learned how to use the layout view in ArcMap, add a title, scale, grid, and north arrow to your project, and export the map as a JPEG or PDF. Tune in for our next video on downloading a Landsat image. Thanks very much.